This is a DigiRig device. This is an interface, a small and very compact interface device to go in between your computer and your radio that does not have a built-in sound card. It's smaller, lighter weight, better for portable operations. We're going to talk about it right now. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews news and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. I want to give a special thanks to both Gigaparts and DigiRig for sending me this unit here and uh, all these other units I'm about to put on the table right now. So in a nutshell, what happened was Gigaparts said, hey, we want to start carrying these DigiRig devices, and they've been out for a little while. You can find videos on them. Uh, Julian OH8STN, he's done a couple of really good videos on this device. So it's not really a new device. There's new versions of it. I'll put it that way. But Gigaparts reached out to me. He's like, hey, we want to start carrying this device. Will you do an evaluation of it? And I said, sure, yeah, that's fine. So they sent me one. And long story short, the one they sent me came with these two cables right here. You can see these are two Kenwood K connectors. There's one here, this, this green one and this black one. And then all of the DigiRig devices, I have four of them here right now. We'll show you those in a minute. All the DigiRig devices come with a USB-A to USB-C cable as well. The original one they sent me, which is this, this guy right here, was to plug into a Bofang UV5R, or basically any radio with a Kenwood K connector. Here we go right here. In fact, here's your here's your size comparison for those of you wanting to say, how many Bofangs big is that thing? There it is right there. <laughs> so this is how many, this is how it compares to the Bofang. And this is a, this is an actual UV5R. This is a UV, I, I apologize. This is a UV5X. This is the GMRS version. Same exact size and form factor as a, as a 5R. They sent this to me and they said, hey, this can be cool because you can do FT8 over a Bofang, a Balfang. And I'm like, interesting. I wonder how it does that. So I got it and I tinkered with it for like a couple hours one afternoon. And I'm like, okay, guys, this is cool, but it's really kind of unusable because it's not actually, it's doing FT8 over FM. And I'm like, Ugh. I don't see the point. What explain to I'm missing something, okay? And they said, well, you can do JS8 call. You have another station near to you. You can do JS8 call and you can type to it. Yeah, that's kind of, that might be kind of fun. If you're sitting in a deer stand or sitting on in a campsite and you, you guys at the other campsite, if we all go to the campsite together uh, this summer or something and, and hang out, we could JS8 call or FT8 one another. Kind of a novelty, kind of not very useful in the field. So I reached out to DigiRig and I said, hey, this is what I'm seeing. What am I? Am I missing something here? And he's like, "No, nah, man. It's it's like he's like you wouldn't believe the number of people who have asked me for that." I'm like, "Really? That's odd. That people would want to do FT8 over F or GS8 call over FM through a Baofeng." Anyway, you know, to each his own. And he said, "There's a way you can go in." And I didn't. I haven't figured this part out yet. So this is gonna have to be done in another video. There's a way you can connect this DigiRig device and add APRS to your Baofeng or to your to your radio with a Kenwood K connector that doesn't have APRS in it already. Okay, so there's a way to do that. There's a way to do, um, they said that there was a way to make it do SSTV. It's an option. I don't know how useful it is really, but adding APRS to a non-APRS radio sounds like a fun idea, and we're going to do another video on that later. So I was traded emails back and forth with Dennis from DigiRig, and he's very nice, very accommodating, very helpful, very straightforward in answering my questions. And he said, well, here's the thing. We've got different models because different radio manufacturers make different models, CAT control and CIV and, and I computer interface control in different ways. They don't all do it the same way. So very similar to a signal link device where you have to change certain things on the jumper, on the, on the EEPROM inside. These are the same way. So now I've got, through the sheer goodwill of Dennis, now I've got Three, uh, four extra, three extra, four total. So this is the Baofeng one. Let me switch over to the overhead cam. This is the Baofeng right here. This is for the ICOM. Now this will work great on a IC706, an IC7000, uh, maybe even some older ICOMs that have a, a USB interface or a, or a uh, sound card out, some sort of sound card out, some sort of output like this. Like the ICOM uses this larger modular plug right here. This is for an IC7000. Okay, so, and then the 
And then this guy is for the Elecraft, and that uses the, the blue-green cable on the Elecraft right there for the KX series. I think it'll work. I asked him specifically for my KX3 so I can plug this into my KX3. I think all the Elecrafts use the same connection, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So something to test later. And then this one here, this is the one we're going to look at today. This one is for... Tell me if you can guess what that is. That is correct. That one is for the Discovery... Lab 599 TX500 QRP radio. So this radio is great, but it does not have a built-in sound card. This radio doesn't have a built-in anything, really. No built-in tuner, no built-in battery, no built-in sound card. It's a fantastic radio. I really have enjoyed using this radio over the last couple months that I've had it. I've just kind of been tinkering with it. My hope is to do a Parks on the Air with it very soon. But this radio here does not have a built-in sound card, so that is what this is. Now, one thing I will say about all of these which is kind of a neat aspect of the entire system. Once you get this installed in Windows, basically you just have to plug this into Windows, Windows Red, the drivers for it, and then you have to go into the driver to the, while this is plugged in and powered on, and you, it, doesn't, it doesn't require any power other than just what's over USD, it's powered over USB. So you plug this into Windows, you go in and you set a couple of settings, and... I will link a video here for where you can do that. Uh, you just go into Windows Properties, Audio Properties, you find the device that this is called, and then you just adjust the properties so it doesn't overdrive your radio. But once this, once Windows recognizes this device, this is the driver. This is what has the drivers. This is what Windows sees to control your radio. So once you install this device, then you can use the ICOM, you can use the Elecraft, you can use the, the TX500, you can use any of them, and you don't have to reinstall anything else. Now, in WSJTX, if we're going to do FT8, you have to change rig control, but you just set up a different profile in WSJTX. If there's a rig control for um, Elecraft for, for the KX line, there's a rig control for the ICOM line, there's, a rig, there's not a rig control for the TX500 at the time of this recording, so we're going to use the TS2000 kind of generic thing. Uh, for cat control. Now you can turn cat control completely off in WSJTX and just use the sound card interface and then just manually dial your radio to the frequency you want. Make sure it matches WSJTX and you can use it that way. But we can very easily enable cat control with the TX500 so that when we change bands on the TX500 uh, through WSJTX, the radio will follow it. So that makes it basically you only have to, so window, as far as Windows is concerned, you only have to install it one time. You do have to, once again, you do have to change the settings on WSJTX, depending on what radio and cat control you're using, but that's simple. You should have different profiles in your WSJTX for that anyway. I've got like six profiles in my WSJTX already. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy right here, and this is the, this is the, this is a really nice like nylon cable. It's the USB-C to USB-A cable. And then it comes with two cables that are these funky aircraft plugs, whatever. They, there's a name for these plugs. I don't remember what they are. These round plugs that fit into the side of the TX500 with the, uh, the screw-down connections. You take that, you plug it in to the radio, power the radio on, plug it into the computer. It comes up. It works just great. So we're going to take a look at that right now. All right, as we're hooking this up, there is... Let me see if I can get this in the camera real quick. Put this over here. There is, let's see if we can focus that. On the end of the, of the digi rig, there are two ports, one for audio and one for serial. You can see that now that the camera is focused. So they're both 3.5 millimeter ports, one for audio, one for serial. And then on this one, there's just a USB-C connector. It just says USB. The USB-C to USB-A cable is the same for all of these devices. This is this really nice nylon cable, uh, corded nylon cable. It works very well. So on this specific radio, on the TX500 from Lab 599, from Discovery Lab 599, all of your ports in the side of the radio have a different number of pins. That one has four pins. That one has, looks like, five pins. This guy over here has, that's six and eight, or what? I don't know. I can't count right now. Two, two, four, six, seven. That one's seven. This one looks like it's sick. Yeah, that one's six. So in other words, it's not possible to plug in unless you just jam it in there. It's not possible to put the wrong plug in the wrong port on the radio. Okay, so it's kind of obvious which one goes where. So on the, in this specific case, the serial port is going to go into the cat control. 
because this is a four pin and this is a four pin here. So we're going to put this in like this. There's that. And I kind of guess, I didn't have any instructions to, although I've found them since then, I didn't have any instructions to tell me this, but I just to me, it made sense that the serial port went to the cat control and then the audio port goes to the data port because your audio coming in from the radio is your, your signal, your, JT, your WSJTS or FT8 or JT65 or whatever it is signal is your data that's coming into the radio. So we put that there. Tighten that down. This right here is right there. And audio to data and serial to cat control. And it does work this way. I've already used it. Did some preliminary tests on the device before I hit go on the camera. So that is how you connect up the TX500. Now we're going to launch WSJTX, and I'm going to show you how to do it, how to set all that up. And uh, I'll put a link below. There's a groups.io list where I found this information, and I can link that below and share it with you guys. You can go check that out on your own time. All right, so I got all this hooked up, and I wanted to tinker with it a little bit before I hit go, but I just made contact on about 7 watts with VE4HTO, Victor, Victor Echo 4, which is a Canadian station. And you can see that's the one in red. He's our RR73. And that is that works just fine with that. Right there towards the bottom. Now, what I did do, the reason it's only running seven watts is because my SWR is a little high. So that's an antenna problem that I need to address with this new switch I recently put in, which I'll got another video about that upcoming. That's neither here nor there for this video. So we'll talk about that later. So here's what I did. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the screen here. All right, so on WSJTX, to get the this radio working, the settings screen is right here. So we're going to choose is the radio. Okay, so, well, first of all, okay. So when I went into Windows and plugged this device in the first time, it installed the drivers by itself. I didn't do anything extra for that. So it called it something else. It put it here in the sound thing. And it called it like a UART device, U-A-R-T. That's what that's the driver that it runs on, or the, the form factor, whatever it's called, that it runs on. So it called it a US UART device. I renamed it to it, it installs both a microphone and a speaker. And I renamed it. You can see I'm talking right now because the microphone's on. Uh, so that's the that's the output of the radio right there. And you can go in, in here to device properties and set the volume. It tells you to set the microphone volume for the digi rig somewhere around 20 to 30. I set mine at 23, so that's where that's at now. And I just renamed, you know, if you go into device properties, you can rename it right here. I renamed it to digi rig so I knew what it was. Because if I ever install anything like a flex radio or anything else on here, it might be called something else. And then you can go into the volume here of the speakers. And you can, you can rename that the, with the speakers there, and you can set different things here. I didn't change anything in here. But you can set the master volume for the DigiRig. Make sure you choose your output device. Set the master volume. And it had it, had its, uh, it, it, by default, it sets way down here. Something like that. So I ended up turning it up all the way due to the, and now the, the DigiRig says to, to start out around 20 or 30. According to the device, PDF file that I read specifically about the TX500 radio, it says to turn it all the way up. So your mileage may vary depending on your sound card, depending on your Windows system, depending on this, that, and the other, whatever. But that's where you're going to want to set that. So you just basically find the audio properties, go down to the, your system tray at the, at the bottom right of the corner, bottom right corner of the screen, find your audio speaker, right click and go to open sound settings. And that brings up this device right here. You can go in there and rename it turn your volumes down to like 20 or 30, both for the microphone and for the speaker. And then you can adjust accordingly depending on which radio you're connecting it to. But specifically for the TX500, I ended up setting the master volume on the sound output all the way up. And I just left the microphone alone. I didn't, I didn't mess with the microphone at all. So that is that. So you want it to, to so we're going to close that. So in the settings of WSJTX, you obviously for the input, after you've renamed it, you're going to want to call it DigiRig and DigiRig for the input and output. You want to make sure that's set. And then in radio here, we're going to set the, the rig as a TS-2000. 
For the longest time, I ran my flex radio as a TS-2000. In fact, I, st I think I still may run my flex radio as a TS-2000 on my laptop. I don't know, whatever. But you're going to run this as a TS-2000. It's kind of a generic setting for some of these guys. The COM port is whatever your COM port's going to be on your computer. So you'll have to go into device prop device manager and find the COM port for the UART device. We can uh, I can do that real quick for you. Device manager right there. So Silicon Labs CP210X USB to UART bridge COM8. That is what the Digi rig gets named by default. When you when you go into sound properties the first time it's going to be called something like that. A USB to UART or Silicon Lad CP2X10 210X blah 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 blah. I just renamed it to Digi Rig because what the heck does that mean? I don't know. So you you find that and that and then it'll say it says COM8 there to the far right. So you can see where right there where it says COM8. It's going to be different on every computer depending on where you what you've got. So just find what the COM port is and that's what you are going to want to set right here in this serial port drop down menu here. My experience has been that when you hit this drop down, it's usually if if it's if the digi rig or whatever sound card you recently plugged in is the latest thing you've plugged in, it's usually the highest number. So like if there was a six, seven, and eight right here right now, it'd be com eight. That's my experience anyway. Maybe that'll vary. Baud rate is ninety six hundred. This is specifically for the TX five hundred radio now. Okay, this is instructions I got from the groups.io, which I will link in the description below. Baud rate is ninety six hundred. Data bits is eight. Stop bits is one. And handshake is none. And then we can go up here to PTT. And the PTT method is cat control. The mode is data packet. And the split operation is fake it. So if we t click on test cat, you've got a green button there. And if we click on test PT PTT, you can see right here that the radio is, is keyed up. Okay, and then I can unclick test PTT. And then I get the the waterfall again at the bottom. So that so that's all up and working. Now again, my SWR is a little bit high. If I turn the volume down in my Windows properties that I just showed you, if I turn the va master volume down for the the Digi Rig device, the SWR comes down, but the power also goes down. So at about seven watts right now, and this battery might not be. I'm running the 12 amp hour BioNO. Special thanks to Kevin at BioNO for these these fantastic batteries. So we got that. And now we can go, and now we can go, so if, if we're looking at the screen, at the top right of your screen right now, you see 14.074, okay? And at the bottom left of your screen, let me make that bigger. I know that the WSJTX is probably kind of hard to see. Uh, I can probably do this with it and do a little bit better. So you can see 14.074 at the bottom of the screen right there. So if I switch this to, let's just go to 17 meters for the heck of it. 18.100 right there, you can see the radio switches. So the cat control is working. I can go to, let's go to 40 meters. 7.074 right there. So the radio switches when I switch WSJTX, which means the cat control is working. So everything's nice and nice and neat and, and tidy and whatnot. So I've got a working unit with the Digi rig interfaced, this guy right here, Digi, Digi rig interfaced to the TX500. Let's zoom out just a touch here. Digi rig interface to the two, TX500. A lot of cords here. This is my antenna. This is the microphone port. So you're going to see a couple videos upcoming on this TX500 from Lab 599. It's a really great device. Really enjoyed using this radio over the last however long it's been. The guy in green, uh, November Bravo 7 Bravo. I, I worked him from this device just now. My SWR is a little bit high. It's running about 2.1 or 2.2 right now. So, but it's only pushing like five or six watts. So I've got it turned down a bit. Uh, you can see the 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 meter at the bottom left corner of WSJTX is also red. You can adjust for that in the microphone and the speaker settings of Windows. We're calling CQ back to Whiskey Bravo 6. No, yes, Whiskey Bravo 6, Whiskey Uniform Whiskey right now, who had a, like a negative two signal on me when he came back a minute ago. So that's a pretty good signal coming in. Maybe I can get back to him with QRP. Maybe I can't. We'll see what happens there. So who's heard of the DigiBrig device before and who has one and what radio do you use it with? Because like I said, this is for multiple radios. My plan right now is not only to use it for this, this TX500, but I actually have, the reason I asked DigiBrig for 
all of the ones I did. He sent me three extra ones after the Baofeng one, the one for the ICOM, the one for the KX3, and the one for the TX500. I have all of those radios, okay? So the ICOM one, I will probably end up putting in my truck so that I can either... <laughs> I don't want to say I'm going to work WSJTX while driving down the road, although I've, I have I may or may not have done that before in the past with a tablet remoted back to my flex radio at home, but I'm not, I'm, I, I admit nothing. But what you can do is if, if you've got a, if you've got a good, um, if you've got a connection ready to go, that's easy like this, you can take your laptop with you, plug it into the radio, plug it into the digi rig in the truck, take the truck out to POTA and you can POTA with FT8 from your IC7. I have an IC7000 in the truck. So I'm going to connect this ICOM version to my IC7000, hide it all under the seat and whatnot. Actually, the radio is already behind the seat. Put it all behind the seat and then give me an FT8 connection that I can just plug right into, launch WSJTX, click the correct profile and start calling CQ POTA from a POTA park. That's one thing there. I also have a KX3 that I have only used on soda at the time of this recording and I really want to use for POTA, because the KX3 is a fantastic radio. I've actually got a couple of different KX3 videos I'm planning soon, and I recently picked up a K3, and I don't know if this digi rig will work through the K3. The K3 does not have a built-in sound card. The K3S, from what I'm told, has a built-in sound card. So I'm going to try to use this digi rig both with my KX3 and my K3, and then of course the, the TX500 uh, version, I will use it there as well. But they, he makes uh, one or two others for, for certain ones. I'm pretty sure he's got a Kenwood one. Um, I'm pretty sure he's got a Yezu one that you could connect it to an FT891, which doesn't have a built-in sound card. So there's a couple of different options there. So who's got this? Who's heard of it? And what do you think about it? Put a comment below. Check out the video description below. There will be a link to where Gigaparts is going to start carrying these. And they might be running some discounts on them from time to time. We'll see what happens with that. But they're going to be a new product on the Gigaparts website. And a special thanks once again to the guys at Gigaparts for sending me this, for putting me in contact with the guys from DigiRig. And a huge thanks to the guys at DigiRig for allowing me to uh, tinker around with this toy. It's going to be a fun thing to take out to a park and do POTA with. And I hope you'll join me. 73, and thanks for watching today. Because different radio manufacturers make different models. Uh, diff <clears throat> different radio manufacturers...